Hey guys, and welcome back to Workers Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Adventure Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and welcome back to Twitchy's Tremendous Trojan, my version of the Space Colony that we have inside this little ball of rock here. And we are out and about trying to figure out how to deal with the this, this basic functions of existence itself. We have oxygen, we have water, we have food. We're basically set for the uh, basic needs now, trying to go around and free all our duplicates from the drone of manual uh, interactions with the machines we have around. The past couple of episodes we've been working mainly on automation of all the systems, culminating in last time making an RS Norlatch for the water recycling system pretty much taking the water, water recycling system entirely out of duplicates hands. We do have a one more control system to put onto the bottom hot water tank, but right now we're just going to let our duplicates tidy up the entire area around here. I take a moment to uh, admire my chlorine patch that seems to be uh, developing around the anti-entropy device, and also let's just have a look at what the temperature's doing in the base. It's kind of holding pretty steady across the entire base. Anywhere that is hot is staying hot, thanks to our judicious use of insulative tiles, and anywhere that is cold for the same reason, is staying cold. Our power has been slightly underproducing for the past couple of episodes. The main reason for this is the fact that our natural gas geysers, two of the three are dormant at the moment, and thankfully today we will see one of them spring back into life. I believe we have something like five cycles to wait, and at the speed we are going through this, that of course means we do not have long to wait. We're going to reject that because there was nothing really that I wanted. I'm really only accepting food or... Uh, animals from the printer and it's time finally to expand our cold water tank uh, the main thought process here is that we can spread out the heat over a wider surface area at least on the top and bottom uh, and uh, radiate more heat away that is the plan uh, but we do have a little bit of a uh, drippage issue going in we need to have a couple of areas where the, uh, the the seal around the outside is broken if you will to allow the shift temperature plates the temperature shift plates that's what they're called sorry to get through for some reason they are not allowed to go through any tiles and that's okay we just needed to de uh, devise some sort of weird catch system but those weird catch systems are now filling up with water and dripping over and uh, basically doing exactly what they were supposed to stop down below the draining of the oil is continuing one bar of plastic at a time and the cold water tank down below is filling up with hot steam or rather hot water cold steam uh, and slowly dissipating its heat into the biome over there so that's all working uh, nice and well, but it's just gonna be like a little passive system on the go uh, My next plan for the rest of today is to try and expand my farming system We've been surviving on lice life for such a long time now. In, fa in fact recently, we've not even been surviving on lice life We've just been eating uh, mill lice itself uh, And I think we need to clear out some little space at the top I was mentioning how the catch systems were filling up with polluted water I've put down a couple of drainage pumps on the top there and uh, hopefully they're gonna go through and empty out everything into the hot water tanks We're gonna sift it through into uh, non-polluted water of course at first. I also noticed there was a bit of temperature leakage through the airlock so I changed the uh, the tiles up and down into insulated tiles just, just in some sort of vain hope that that will stop the system. So I'd to take a little bit of a moment to have a look at the oxygen system and I've got to say everything is looking a-okay there. The vast majority of the asteroid is starting to look uh, either oxygenated or uh, it'll be something like chlorinated or something like that. So having a look up above I can see there is a whole bunch of polluted water that I really need to to deal with uh, and obviously I can't just bring the pipe up in this manner this is a wastewater pipe by the way I, I found the wastewater coming from the uh, the toilets to the left and decided to just extend it up so that we can start draining that polluted water because of course we don't want to just drop it into the base and it being above us it's one of the two options we got let it drop or drain it and so drain it is going to be the thing I know this Ruby is doing the cooking and I'm like no 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 another three is supposed to be the cook uh, what's what's another three up to? Turns out he's going around picking stuff up from other uh, biomes and stuff. I assume some sort of farming job or something, but uh, who knows? Uh, the pinch of pepper is doing very well. I thought this would have to be in a chlorine, but it turns out it just needs to be in a hot. So uh, that's that's pretty good. We also have some more growing down into the bottom right. And my eventual end game, and I thought I was going to get this done this episode, but it turns out not, is to grow pinch of pepper down in the bottom right there, uh, where the control system for the hot water is, because of course it's right next to the hot water, so of course it's going to be hot. And also there's a whole bunch of like polluted water that comes down by that way, and it just, it's, uh, it's very conveniently close to all the all the things that it needs. Stravicus going along and doing the top job there of going through and digging out everything we need. Of course, uh, trying to plan some sort of uh, really efficient digging system to start getting through some of these layers here. I didn't want to put 
I didn't want to put ladders everywhere. I, I could have just put a whole bunch of ladders all the way across and dealt with it that way. Uh, but instead, no, I've decided to go ahead and leave little dirt piles behind that we can dig out separately on the way back. Got a little bit of downtime at the moment, and that's a little bit unfortunate. But I'm going to take the moment to try and figure out exactly what sort of sort, what sort of size farms we can build. There is a farming station in the game, and I want to try and make maximum use of this. Uh, the maximum size of farm that it classes as a greenhouse is a 96 tile room, uh, and I'm going to try and take maximum uh, use of that. I actually end up making a 95 tile room. I feel a little bit bad about that. But what we're going to do here is try and extend the water pipe off to the other side because, of course, we can pour hot water in one side and then it will cool down as it makes its travel over to the left-hand side where all the actual serious cooling is. And then as the cold water gets pumped out, the hot water gets drawn down. That's my thinking there. Anyway, Shravka's finally finishing the bigger dig over there and I'm trying to think about the best way to take out the piles of dirt. Obviously, if I just go ahead and put an entire um, dig order across the lot, then he's going to end up digging the middle one out and then being stranded on one of the two sides. You, you know this is a problem that happens. Uh, I'm a little bit worried about how to deal with the water on top of the cold water tank uh, because a lot of it now is not polluted water. It's actually just normal water water. So I, I don't know if I want to do something or with uh, that. And I'm finding a lot of people going up and removing stuff from the steam room. I'm not sure if I'm bothered about that, but one thing I am bothered about is the fact that the uh, tiles around the outside are not initiative, so we could be losing a lot of heat out through that way. I'm not worried about losing the heat, but I'm worried about the heat uh, affecting all sorts of other things, particularly uh, enjoying the pile of water that we're getting underneath there. We might have to uh, try and do something with that. It's going to be a very, very tempting resource to use. Still not sure why the shine bugs are not going into the fly creature catching mechanism thing there. If anybody knows, let me know why. Uh, I also note that the bottom bottom uh, hot water tank is starting to get to the point where it is ready to uh, have a control system fitted. And I'm like tracing this through and I, I, I feel like I don't understand the uh, the gnaw latch there. So what I'm actually going to do is swap out the bottom one for an XOR because I've got it in my brain that that would actually make a little bit more sense. And I'm, I'm going to see what happens because I, I, I feel like when the... If, it's, if, if the if the or latch is already switched on and then it's another signal comes through, if it's or, it doesn't matter if they're both, because then they'll both be the same, it's still an on. Whether you've got one or one on the other or both, it, it all gives the same signal. And I feel like that shouldn't be that way. I feel like when they're both on, it should give, uh, it should stop giving a signal. I am wrong in this assessment, but this is something that I'm trying to do. This is the, the, the thought process that is laying out in my brain. Uh, if I didn't have those two knock gates on there, I think I've got a feeling what I'm thinking about would actually work that way. And I might try and make a more condensed system uh, later on. But we're going to stick with the system that we know works at some point. Okay, so you can see that I put all the uh, basic infrastructure in for the pump at the top. So that's going to work out pretty well for us as soon as we get up there. And we are digging out the uh, piles of the one pile at a time. I was kind of hoping that the ladders in the middle could get built a little bit quicker so that we're not re relying entirely entirely on the uh, the ladders on the left. Thankfully, this has now actually happened, so we can send Shrouticus up in any direction we like, and he will go around and do the digging. And of course, he will go both directions, because because that's great. That's exactly what we wanted, right? All right, put a few more bits of infrastructure in place, put the uh, priorities up, but we're looking at the beautiful insulation going around that cold lock there. Uh, should hopefully help keep the cold in here and the hot out there, and, and everything will keep nicely well balanced. The drainage seems to be going okay, but we still definitely have uh, little areas of uh, water lock in between that one gap tile there. I'll have to try and figure out if there's a way of doing that. I noticed that Shadow constantly complaining about starvation, despite the fact that very much can go and eat at any time they want. I'm, I'm not sure what the great deal is with that, but we're going to have another puffling from the uh, from the printer anyway. I have technically broken the seal of the base in the top left. Uh, you can see where the electrolyzer is over there. You can kind of just go up and over, uh, so I need to go through and fix that. Insulative tiles the whole way. We're going to try and insulate the base from the rest of the asteroid because all sorts of weird stuff happens outside the base. We're trying to like boil water, freeze water, uh, kill germs, like the, all sorts of stuff that really is not great to let have an impact on the base inside. So I, I try to make sure everything is insulated. I've been 
mean, if I really, really want to get like super technical about it, I might build a double wall, uh, not well, a wall gap wall, and then pump out a vacuum in the middle so that we are like 100% totally insulated. That would be a pretty tasty, I think. That would be quite nice. Okay, the water is going down, but we're still, still not able to pump as much as we like. Uh, it's, it's a bit of a shame. I would like much more to go through, but I've, I've noticed my mistake. I noticed my mistake on the automation there. I was like, oh yeah, I see why it doesn't work now. And it's a bit hard to uh, explain just in words here why that doesn't work, but it's, it's all about the chain effects because one thing through the action of the knock gate ends up affecting the other. Um, it's all about the two OR gates interacting with each other, but the knock gate makes it the interaction that you want rather than the interaction that you don't want. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I decided that we need to move the automation wire as well so that we can get automation for the bottom tank in. Uh, I suppose we could have figured it out a different way but with all the slime that we've just dug up, up, up on top i've decided that uh fixing not fixing sorry tidying should be a pretty high priority because we don't want to fill our base with polluted oxygen we we just spent a long time like you know hundreds of cycles trying to make sure there is no polluted oxygen in our base uh and and then i just go and drop a whole load of slime everywhere so you know that's that's something that i really didn't want to happen i've gone and put down the blueprints for the next rs nor latch for the bottom tank it's looking pretty good we've got to figure out how we're going to get in there and put down a hydra center i mean that is literally just wait for the water level to drop below the uh, door level and send someone in so i'm looking at these wheeze warts underneath and i'm thinking wouldn't it be nice if we had some sort of like oven situation but a cold so I, I don't know fridge situation underneath much like we have the oven situation underneath the hot tank where we have a contained area full of hydrogen to try and pass on the temperature from the weeds warts as quick as possible or to the obsidian tiles so i start building down for that and i also am thinking about where we're going to put the farming stations and i feel finally that maybe we need to have that little uh, airlock even though it is a temporary airlock that never really ever gets used it's just there in case of like forms of panic and we need to let other people in um it's gonna have a corridor all on its own because it was just a little bit awkward it had like some power wire uh, going through it, some heavy watt wire going through it and you can't build on top of that so i just threw another uh, roof of farm tiles on top of it the uh, cold cold fridge cold cold oven seems to be going all right and you can see there's a bunch of hydrogen being fed in there so uh, slowly over time the hydrogen should hopefully displace the oxygen i mean there are a few problems with that what with the door being on the left and actually being high up and stuff like that uh, we're probably going to lose the hydrogen before we get rid of all the oxygen but you know we can work on these processes as we go on maybe we'll put a vent on the other side so it can uh, displace the oxygen something like that so we've got people being stored outside and people being stored inside but thankfully they don't need to uh, actually have an exosuit to be able to make their way past the exosuit checkpoint on their way back in which is you know that's that's pretty good you know there, there, there could be a, syst uh, a system where we'd end up with people being stranded outside and that would that would be a very very bad day okay so i find space for the farming station and this is all starting to look pretty well we're going to start with bristle blossom just because we should have been growing that like, like literally I don't know, where, where are we? Cycle 264, we should have been growing at about 200 cycles ago. I think everybody's going to agree with me uh, there. Uh, and I've just got this nice little space here. I used the the tool that shows you the size, I mean, like either the council tool or the deconstruct tool. will show you the size inside. It will give you like a 5 by 16 or whatever. Um, and then you just kind of times those two numbers together and that will tell you how many tiles are inside the box. And as long as you're below 96 or above... 24? 14? One of those two numbers. Uh, then you can have a greenhouse as, as, as long as it's all contained. Beautiful. Beautiful. And that's what we're going to be working towards. Okay, I'm having a look around to see if there's anything else we should be working on. But I've suddenly decided to actually know that would just uh, restrict what we're doing elsewhere. Uh, and it's really time to, uh, to get this hot water tank down below properly fit it out with the full control system we'll have a hydro sensor on the bottom we'll have a hydro sensor up top we have a germ sensor on the bottom next to the pump i've decided that's the best place for it if i could really be bothered i would set up a couple of uh germ sensors and then put another sort of control system in there one that um will only allow it if the if the sensor uh sorry if the pump is completely surrounded by germ free water but as it is i think just the one tile next to it will probably be fine you know we, we've got the heat coming from the bottom so 
all the tiles at the bottom will probably burn out together uh, and that will be nice. Okay, that farm is definitely coming along, but there's a lot of complaints about the Bristle Blossom right there and I'm thinking that, oh, uh, you know, it's just that where I've got all these build orders being put together and my farmer hasn't been able to come up. Uh, I know that it needs some illumination. That's, that's not a big problem. We can definitely uh, work that out, especially as the electrolyzer set up on the left. We'll probably have a serious power system on the go so we can just like get in there and steal that. The uh, digging every other rock uh, on the top layer there seems to properly be working out for us. People are coming along and fixing the tiles behind us while Stravkus, the man himself, goes through and does all the major digging. That's pretty cool. I've got a feeling we're just about to strand him though because I got a little bit overzealous with the digging. Thankfully, the tiles only need um, igneous rock and the things that he's been digging down have been igneous rock. So it should be pretty good. I go and put down a whole line of water to give water to the farm tiles. Some of you might know there's a problem with that. Uh, and we let that go. I'm going to put a vent on the hot water tank at the top, by the way, because it's just too full of gas. We can't we can't plug all the water in there, and then it's going to overflow, and all sorts of problems are going to happen. And maybe maybe we'll end up breaking a wall or something, because that that happens relatively regularly. Okay, with the two last tiles being built, there we go. Shrapskus does it himself. He is free to get out and start living the life that he always wanted to live. I'm not exactly sure what Shrapskus's like life dreams would be if he was to uh, spring up on this rock. I think being the best builder he could ever be is probably a, a pretty strong choice there. Uh, I'm wondering how we want to set this up one up because I want to have this being a mushroom farm. And mushroom farms need to be full of carbon dioxide. So we need a roof on the... Not a roof, sorry. A door pointing downwards so that we can get in there without disturbing the very delicate balance of atmosphere that we're going to be setting up. Uh, it takes exactly the same form as the farm underneath it. It's, you know, it's a, it's a system that works. Why break it, right? Why break it? Uh, uh, and everything should be working up a okay as long as we get enough room for people to move around. Okay, I have noticed my problem here. Farm tiles are not hydroponic tiles. You cannot put water into a farm tile. You can, however, put them into the hydroponic tiles. And using the wonders of the red alert um, priority, you can see that we're making sure that everybody in the base is coming along to fix the problem that I have created. Uh, thankfully, we don't really need to be so draconian with putting the seeds back in because the uh, the farmhands, they're pretty good. They do their job pretty well. They'll go around and replace all the seeds uh, like pretty, pretty quickly, especially as they can access the farm tiles from underneath. They don't actually need to go inside. Of course, when they start using the farm station, they'll need to go inside. Incidentally, up top, you can see that I put the farm station on the right-hand side. Uh, that was because I was like, wait, if they're going to use the farm station, they need to walk all the way to the other side. Now, the reason that it's all the way on the other side on the bottom one is because there just happened to be a handy little shelf there. And I'm going to go for aesthetics over uh, practicality every time if there just happens to be a shelf there. Uh, looking at the water underneath, everything seems to be going out. Okay, I was wondering why that lump of rock there wasn't melting, but that's because it's a lump of rock, not a lump of ice. So that's pretty good. And I'm really, really just waiting to get these farms done. Once we start having extended um, ingredient lists, that's, that's the word I'm looking for. Once we start having a few more ingredients to work with, I'm going to definitely expand the kitchen out to have a few more workstations and a few more fridges for stuff. And of course, we could then move the lice loaf up a little bit. We could move the mess hall around. We could just re re the whole sort of fooding system for the duplicates so that they can like have a much nicer system on the go. I do believe that actually right now we have one less mess table than we can actually uh, than we actually have of duplicates. And that's uh, that's not the situation I like to have running. So we can try and figure out some way of dealing with that. I say that's not the situation I like to have running. It's literally been going on for about a couple of hundred cycles now. Okay, so I was saying about how we needed to have carbon dioxide up for the mushrooms. So I'm thinking we need to pump some in, pipe some in even, from the whole situation down below. And like all of the gas geysers are producing carbon dioxide during the combustion of the natural gas. And also the production of plastics is also producing carbon dioxide. So if we can get the, get the flow going well up there, we can fill that whole room up fairly quickly. And of course, because oxygen floats on top of carbon dioxide, it should be able to like displace it out the door fairly nice and well. So I see a few items in the cold water tank that really don't need to be there. There's like a, a, a planter and some mesh tile and stuff like that. These were when uh, these were a hangover, sorry, from when we had a wheezewort in there. And of course, that's that's not there anymore. We put it underneath, so we're going to make use of that. Talking of making use of stuff, we've got a neuralizer up top. We opened up this one uh, last time by digging out stuff from the 
roof above each of these uh, pressure plates uh, and giving us access to the neuralizer. We're going to give Shrouticus, uh what is that? I think it was Death's Lungs or, uh, no, it was Sunny Disposition, I remember. Uh, he, we get, he's got a Sunny Disposition now, so he can deal with stress, and so we can put him through a little bit more torment. The water seems to be flowing absolutely fine now, and I'm hoping that we are going to be pumping in more water than we are going to be consuming. Most of the time when the water is flowing from the cold tank, that is the situation that happens. But unfortunately, we seem to be just a little bit behind. I also noticed that you know, there's just a little bit too many natural materials in that sort of area down there. So I think it would be a rather nice if we could dig out all the rock and replace it with an actual wall. You notice that I've gone round and ordered a suit for all of the exosuit docks down below there. Uh, that's because I feel with the... the, the uh, seal of the outside of the base being broken at some point maybe some of the exosuit docks got lost some of the exosuits sorry got lost from their docks uh, and so if we just order a whole bunch of new ones i'm not making any new ones so any that are lost around can be found i noticed that the uh, light didn't quite cover everywhere i needed it to cover so we can stick down a little bit of a lamp at the end there and that will make all the bristle blossoms super happy and super available to be growing nice and fast and what with shadow going around and uh adding fertilizer and the touch of the farmer we should be getting some pretty serious crops out of that pretty quickly so the majority of the top end of the pipe has been built for the carbon dioxide but we gotta wait for the bottom end to be made and i'm noticing there's a lot of detritus just kind of hanging around up in that sort of area over there around the electrolyzer obviously we didn't tidy up when we built it so i'm gonna throw down a storage compactor that's the word storage compactor to tidy everything into it just it cuts down on travel time uh, immensely immensely uh, i also had a quick moment to have a look at a farm tile and make sure that mushrooms were more than okay to be uh, grown in the farm tiles yes it turns out they're cool in fact i'm just going to use a planter because that's you know more aesthetically pleasing right i suppose that is a bit of a contentious issue is the planter more more aesthetically pleasing than the normal farm plot the one that you can put in the floor i i, I don't know i kind of like it because it looks like it's you know, almost like a flower vase or something like that but anyway that new storage compactor we put down we went and got the setting from one of the other storage compactors that's used as just a general like hey all this air all this area here needs cleaning put everything in this box copy the settings from there and that seemed to work out a-okay for us the uh duplicates going around fixing all that gas pipe we are very close to having that entire line put into place here it looks to me like we've got subs and maybe shroud because maybe brum i'm not sure exactly maybe maybe it's all three now that i take a moment to have a look at what's actually going on in fact ruby is in the mix having a little bit of a sleep i've got a fair few narcolepsy in the group it turns out and I didn't, I didn't realize how many it actually was uh, the, the, the thing is that narcoleptics they do zero bad to the to the group when things go wrong it's not like you know they're, they're vomiters or whatever uh, and I know that's kind of a different system but you know it's like the noisy sleepers they're bad for your colony you need to like designed specifically for them but the narcoleptics they just go to sleep anyway the carbon dioxide is flowing it's not flowing well but it is flowing so we should have some sort of system on the go but at the same time i'm noticing that there are all sorts of like gaps in our oxygen system and stuff like that or like rather loops in our oxygen system extra bits of pipe they can definitely be doing with being taken away all right the flow comes through and finally we are getting a little bit of carbon dioxide into that room there i think it's going to take a little bit of time to actually fill up enough as you can see we're just getting individual tiles at a time and of course those individual tiles are going to combine together at some point but let's take a moment to appreciate uh shadow's work down below making sure all the bristle blossoms have been well fertilized in fact some of them even appear to be like halfway through their growth cycle or something like that just going around and quickly changing the slime priorities because the fungus wants slime to grow uh, and the slime machine, the slime distillers down below also want slime. So if I put the slime distillers on seven and I put the mushrooms on nine, well, both of those will make sure that slime gets picked up before it like vents too much gas out and around. Uh, and then thankfully the mushrooms should get it before the distillery. Uh, and if not, it's not the end of the world. We just want to grow a few more mushrooms. So I'm still worried about that trap gas at the top of the uh, hot water tank there. I'm sure you guys saw me put the uh, put the gas vent in in some sort of a manner to try and like alleviate the pressure. Uh, and I've now noticed that we have a bit of a problem here. We've got a little dancing a dancing bit of carbon dioxide going back and forth. And I'm like, uh, I kind of get what's going on here. We've got little loops of pressure and stuff like that. Maybe this is something that we can fix some 
somehow. Uh, whilst I'm thinking about this, I'm just having a look around the base, be like, hmm, how do I fix this? How do I fix this? Uh, and watching these guys go and do their thing, I'm like, okay, all right, we, what we need to do is remove the gas vent from inside here. Uh, it, it's going to be a little bit of a system if we, like, we forget about it, and then suddenly this room is just spilling all its carbon dioxide out and about. But for the meantime, I think it should work uh, pretty well. Uh, the digging out of the natural resources put a little bit of sand in our water, not great. But there is also another problem. I'm not sure if you can see it going on right now. There is a gas bridge down below. And of course, gas bridge is a one-way item. Now, this is both a blessing and a curse, depending on what you want to use it for. And it turns out today, it is a curse. That's no big problem but it's something we need to go and work on. Talking of working on, a little bit too much water there. I should have put that block up way before, but it's not actually that much too much water, and the water that's spilling out is spilling out onto our algae, uh, algae terrariums, so that's actually working out for us. It ends up like hydrating the algae terrariums and also turning some carbon dioxide into oxygen in the base. It's not the stuff we're trying to keep, so that's working out all right. Okay, so here I have noticed the problem. Because the one-way bridge uh, exists at the natural gas generators can't output their carbon dioxide anywhere it's like a gas pipe blocked right so the filter for the uh, for the natural gas is like oh I can't send anything anywhere and just has like shut down my entire power system bad times thankfully Brum's coming along to uh, fix this problem for me all I need to do is swap over which pipe is using the one-way gate uh, it's just as simple as that uh, and as long as all this gets put built, built in place and it's all sorted out pretty quickly there you go you can see that the flow is going exactly where it needs to go now now this line is not just a carbon dioxide line it's actually a waste gas line uh, from a couple of places but polluted oxygen it will flow it'll be fine and with those expanded farms i'm going to say thank you very much for joining for this adventure ladies and gentlemen i will see you next time we're going to continue expanding our ingredient collection we're going to make the kitchen a much nicer place to be we're going to make a, a great hall rather than a mess hall yeah we're going to have a beautiful wonderful time but i will see you then when we're going to do that <laughs>